now we're going to go from the nonprofit to nonprofits that become for profits, that become successful companies, that become successful exits, and then start all over again. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome to the stage Dr. Robert Petty. Thanks, Joan. Thanks, AZ Bio. As we all know, Joan's a force, and we're fortunate to have that resource. Uh, I'm here to tell you a story, an Arizona story about partnerships, and hope that some of those stories gleam some value to you as I go through it. But it is a remarkable story. But first, some conflict of interest statements. I'm the CEO of Paradigm. It's an IGC Michigan spin-off company that's housed both here in Phoenix and in Ann Arbor. I'm also the founder and a stockholder in what is now known as Karis Life Sciences. I'm a stockholder in Viomics, and I continue to be the CEO of the IGC. So why partner? And typically you partner because you really need to put together a group of individuals and companies and resources that you otherwise couldn't do. You want to accomplish a goal in the shortest amount of time with the biggest impact. So that expertise and core competency and having well-defined lines as to those core competencies has been extremely valuable to us, and I believe it's valuable to any company that goes out to do this. To be able to reach, in the case of medical uh, diagnostics or uh, patients, to be able to reach those patient systems and the individual patient is key. You know, great ideas, and if you don't get it out, it's a great idea that never really amounted to much. The resources, whether they be the resources of intellectual property that key leadership bring as to where the future is going and how best to manage those potholes that litter the highway that you're trying to drive through, or the finances that you need to be able to get there and having educated and uh, in-depth visionaries that have money and understand that what you're doing will be positive and can, can change the world for a better place is critical. And it can also be in the form of resources and platform companies that give you access to cutting edge technologies. Um, if you're going to do a challenging new concept or a challenging initiative, you need to surround yourself with world beaters, quite frankly, that have social skills. And I wish you luck in finding that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, Alan Greenspan really said it best. Um, I have found no greater satisfaction than achieving success through honest dealings and strict adherence to the view that for you to gain, those you deal with should gain as well. Alignment is critical. I'm still doing deals with people that I did deals with when I got out of medical school. And the reason being is, is that we all respect our boundaries. We've all managed to help patient care in a very large way. And every entity that partnered has done well many times over. So here is our blueprint of how we went out and amazingly did change the practice of oncology in, in the world as we know it today. And we did it through partnership and surrounding ourselves with great people and having great organizations in Arizona to support us. So the IGC, probably not known by many, was actually composed of what is now TGen as well as IGC and myself. and. Uh, Jeff Trent and Dan Van Hoff and the Mallory's were critical to that. And it was through Dick's vision for Arizona that we're all here today. He got it. He got the long-term investment. And he put together the key pieces. Scottsdale Healthcare is IGC's formal nonprofit partner. Max Pohl was legendary in pulling that together. And Scottsdale Healthcare today still uh, does that extremely well for us. I ended up. Uh, working with Jeff and Andy Baxavanis and others to split TGen off uh, in early 2000. And the reason being was that it became apparent that if we were going to create what uh, we called the Expression Project for Oncology, a world-class biobank used by researchers throughout the world, that having researchers inside your organization was a patent conflict of interest that would be preventative for most investments to come into it because everybody knows if you invest in a company that has access to great uh, tissues for discovery with great outcomes, that that seldom gets outside of your doors because you've got to build the gold to make the uh, company continue on. 
So we actually split it. We split it among, amongst, amongst two lines. Jeff took the R&D component of which he had done masterfully at the NHGRI and prior to that U of A grad um, and University of Michigan. And he also took with him Dan Van Hoff, who understood clinical trials. And this is important. These are two partners that have historic successes and know where the potholes are in R&D and in clinical trials. Meanwhile, IGC took the biobank and diagnostic core competencies where we had spent our life making our successful pieces, and we went forward. And, and then through partnering to really bring together those things. So you, you heard the mayor speak of TD2 and Steve Gately. We partnered with Steve and Dan Van Hoff early on, and we partner with him today. I'm, I'm sure I have several emails uh, related to that. We did this expression project for oncology, which really was a remarkable project. And the other thing is your partners have to have some personality deficiencies. They don't understand the word no, and they don't understand the word failure. And they actually think that they can make a difference. And I can't tell you how many ways that Expo was never supposed to happen, but it did. It ended up, in essence, being uh, the forefront runner of the Cancer Genome Atlas Project. And then our partners of Amuripath, another company that I had helped put together, was critical to us and access to laboratories throughout the United States, for those of you that don't know it. And U.S. Oncology, the largest oncology organization with access to oncologists, who I'd also help work with the founder to help uh, as he built his company, all became partners and are partners as we go forward in many ways. We sold uh, MPI, it's now Karis Life Sciences, it was acquired here and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But this blueprint of going out and creating a project that says having more information about molecular pathways and what drugs work on those has completely transformed oncology. And the way we did it is we created a company to provide it to patient care. We created a clinical trial that showed its value. And we did a research project that ended up to be the genome project on cancer, the essence of that. And all of that has now created a tidal wave of which Arizona has led, and quite frankly, everybody in the room and everybody we know should be grabbing a surfboard and trying to figure out how to ride it. So the first case study that uh, Joan asked me to talk about was, uh, you know, how did we put together this Molecular Profiling Institute? And uh, w when we put together MPI, and it was a nonprofit first, um, much like Paradigm is today, um, when we put together MPI, it was a nonprofit, and we put together a test called Target Now, and we did that within MPI. And uh, we, that test was designed to work on cancer patients' tissues and really analyze the tissue to say, what is that unique personalized tumor doing that's making it, uh, whether it's being successful in that patient, and how do we make it unsuccessful, and what drugs work on the specific pathways? A novel concept, but one that we felt was very important and one that needed to come to oncology in a big way rather than large studies that measure outcomes by getting a ruler on a CAT scan or whatever image analysis you do and saying, gee, let's give more of that drug because we're shrinking that tumor. In doing that, we partnered with some key partners to help us along the way. Again, Amuripath, a company that I had had alignment with and trusted, and they got the vision. It's important that they get the vision because if they're not in for the long haul, you really don't want them on board with you. Um, likewise, U.S. Oncology, TGen, providing the R&D for future translational discoveries to MPI was critical to have in place. Affymetrics invested dollars because they were a platform company in gene expression, and they knew the value of gene expression, and Target now was the first commercial oncology test introduced into the nation that used gene expression and became one of the largest tests that's available in the United States today through Karis Life Sciences. So a very, very successful piece. The clinical trial, Dan Van Hoff put together a masterful clinical trial showing that molecular pathways made a difference and improved patient care as opposed to standard of care. The most remarkable finding for me from that study, of all of the cases in which we intervened and gave a drug and made a difference, an improvement in standard of care of progression-free survival by 30 percent. Not one of them was even a thought in an oncologist's mind that was taking care of the patient. Yeah, oncology really needs to come along. So we moved that forward, and that study now has been repeated. 
It was repeated in breast cancer where there was a 50% improvement over standard of care by 30%. Not insignificant. These are only late stage cancer patients, patients that are one step away from hospice. It's now been repeated with next gen sequencing out of MD Anderson. This is the future, and the good news is, is it's going there rapidly right now, and it's a great time to be there, and it's one that worked out extremely well. We sold it to Karis. Karis is down at the Cotton Center and are now charged with doing it. Our expression project became uh, the Genome Project on Cancer, which uh, Collins named the Cancer Genome Atlas Project, which is very clever. Those are the four nucleotides that make up your DNA and make up your cancer and make us what we are today. Um, Phoenix became the uh, Grand Central Station of all of the tissues that would come from the nation and would be analyzed. So we were in charge of extracting the DNA and the RNA and getting those out to the sequencing centers and the characterization centers where it would be amassed. It was basically an expo project on steroids with massive amounts of money in it. Somewhere in the tune of uh, half a billion dollars went into this project. We were fortunate and extremely uh, uh, lucky to be able to bring 67 million to Arizona and to really help do this. But this followed the blueprint of what we had laid out and done here in Arizona with our expression project for oncology. And now we have 10,000 tumors. It's all available on public databases. No one owns anything about it. It has DNA sequencing, microRNA sequencing, mRNA sequencing, as methylation, as protein analysis, as patient outcomes. And it's got some aspects of it which are quite remarkable and has become the equivalent of a Google map. I won't use Rand McNally because it's outdated and it's inappropriate. But a Google map for future cancer to be done, and as a result, the acceleration of discovery is a happening at a, at a rate that I haven't seen forever. So then I'm going to uh, chat about the, the, the third piece. But before I do, uh, we partnered with the NCI, we partnered with the NHGRI, we partnered with every organization that was able to get a grant through the competitive process or a contract. We partnered with the hospitals throughout the United States to send samples in. We had $26 million to go out and collect from the nation's hospitals those samples. And the residual samples reside here for Arizona and for the rest of the world to have access to and make discovery from. So this was nothing more than a blueprint for partnering. And how do you do that by playing well in the sandbox? John Niederhuber, Anna Barker, and Joe Vockley were in charge of that at the NCI. And they're some of the best partners you could ever ask for in life. I've been very, very fortunate in that the partners that I've had at TGen, the partners that I've had at the Flynn, the partners that I've had at the NCI have all had remarkable impacts on patient care, on myself personally, and have been in for the long haul and just terrific. So um, going on to now the next uh, spin-off company, which is Paradigm, which is currently a nonprofit, but will probably be a for-profit within a year or two following the uh, pathway that Molecular Profiling Institute did. This company was a spin-off from the International Genomics Consortium and the University of Michigan. And you could say, well, why would you be going to the University of Michigan to do this? And quite frankly, it comes again about finding the right partners, finding people that have vision, have valuable assets and core competencies that make what you want to do much, much bigger and have money to invest. I tried so hard to get Arizona to do this several years ago, and it was a tough time for Arizona. And I've extended my arm again to the University of Arizona um, and laid it out for them to be a part of this. Um, and I cannot always be successful, but I, 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 we do try. So the, the piece that made the University of Michigan so incredibly valuable is their pathology department was run by a gentleman by the name of Jay Hess who had the vision and got it, knew exactly where we were going, knew exactly, you, it was almost a carbon copy of what I'd been doing for the last 15 years. And Jay amassed the University of Michigan to do it. He put behind it his department, he had 1,000 employees in the Department of Pathology alone. He has a commercial arm that does esoteric testing and does about 50 million a year commercially in the private sector nationwide. He has access to the Cancer Center and all of the whereabouts and the capabilities that the University of Michigan brings to it, which is uh, nothing short of a Fortune 500 company. And they augmented everything that we didn't have. We have rapid access to esoteric tests. We have rapid access to experts in diseases. We have rapid access to clinical trials. We have rapid access to pharmaceutical companies. 
and they made Paradigm national immediately. We brought to it the next generation of next generation sequencing and leapfrogged all of our competitors in the field because we felt very strongly that this needed to come for patient care and we brought to it the quality that's needed for clinical trials. So we put together a genomic landscape that has been extremely accepted now and quite honestly haven't looked for a nickel in the last six months of investment and have probably between 50 and 100 million lined up to try to get into this market because it's so fruitful. So times are good and we've got to partner with the right folks to be able to do this. And the most important thing is can Paradigm add value into patient care? And I would say to you that we already are adding value into patient care and building on what has already been done. So what are some quick lessons learned that we bring back to it? I think the most important part about partnering is, is finding the right people. And I kind of joked earlier on about trying to get world beaters that have good uh, uh, sandbox skills. That is important. You have to be able to trust each other. You have to be able to work together. Um, there were times that, quite frankly, I was viewed as a little bit of a fringe player because what I was trying to do by bringing genomics to patient care looked to be outlandish and, and, and potentially even dangerous. There were threats of 60 minutes showing up, and we persevered. And, and today, you can't go into an oncologist's office and not have them consider providing one of these tests for you. Mm -hmm. So the trust is remarkable, and I have to say, um, knowing Jeff from the times in college and having him as my TA in graduate school at the University of Arizona helped to build that trust. And I know that he and Dan and Dick and David Mallory all trusted, we all trusted each other and we were able to do great things. The interpersonal chemistry is critical. Um, uh, you've got to be able to get along with each other. There are always bumps in the road. There's always challenges and you've got to be able to navigate those and maintain your friendship. It's better to go through bumps in the roads with people that you trust than people that you don't. Um, and pick the right projects. Uh, it needs to be big enough to be worthy of your efforts. It needs to be complex enough that the partnership is really needed, that the partnership brings value so that you can accomplish your goal in, in a very large way. And as I have as the last bullet point, which I think is the most important, is audacious enough to move the field. There's no greater honor than to be in that spot and, and to actually have a few successes that you can chalk up. So thank you very, very much.